try it because um, singing does a lot for you, just as an example. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But um, anyway, so um, and, and and then another another um, example might be that uh, we, we would a lot of times we work with um, older adults post stroke or um, an older adult with Parkinson's and their gait is really, really unsteady. So um, we might want to work with them with a cane, you know, work with their cane um, and, and do something that looks like dancing because we're using really rhythmic, preferred rhythmic music and it's going to look like dancing. But we're not teaching them how to dance with their canes. We're teaching them how to move smoothly so that they have a more even more steady gait. And we're using that rhythm and the music to cue the, the movement of their legs. Um, so, and we don't have time to do all of this tonight uh, because we don't. Uh, but uh, as, as Robin has mentioned, as, as I think you probably are understanding, music therapy is so broad, um, but there are some fascinating videos out there of music therapists working with Parkinson's clients um, who can't, who had that really shuffling Parkinson's gait. I'm just saying all of this so you can go look these up if, if, if you want further information. Um, so the, the patients present with that really shuffling Parkinson's gait. It's not safe. Uh, they look like they're about to fall over. Um, and then you put on a metronome, you, you provide this really strong rhythm and it cues the brain because of all of the different things that y'all just saw on that brain slide. Um, and what do you know, that person starts to walk in rhythm to the metronome. I mean, it's, it's fascinating and it's, it's, it's so moving and it's amazing. And that's, that's music therapy. So we're not, again, we're not trying to teach the person how to walk or we're not trying to teach them how to dance. If that's what it ultimately ends up looking like in a music therapy session. Um, like I worked with an older gentleman after a stroke and he loved, um, he used to swing dance. So we did a lot of gait training and it looked like swing dancing, but we weren't swing dancing. <laughs> we were working on his gait. <laughs> So he would be safe. Okay. So um, our goals get divided into these three different um, these three different goal domains, basically. And this is also where I would typically stop. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask right now? I know Robin's had a few that we've we've highlighted. Does anybody else have anything they want to ask right now, um, just in the middle, or you can hold hold those off and wait until the end too. Is everybody good? Okay, I'll keep going unless somebody pipes in. Okay, so um, yeah, so these are the these are the the goal domains. Um, so we after we've determined that one of our that a client a prospective client is in fact appropriate for music therapy, we then evaluate what their needs are uh, within these domains. So sensory motor, uh, which would be like something like gait, uh, smooth gait, um, speech and language and cognition and cognition cognition is really where we use music to help with things like uh, attention skills or executive functioning um and so speech and language goals might address something like um, pronunciation and breathing or even language acquisition and or understanding something like pronouns um you know uh uh, a sensory motor goal might would, would can address either a client's gross motor goals, like the Parkinson's um, example I've given, or it can express uh, fine motor goals. So, um, like if you, for example, if you want your client to work on being able to hold, we might hold a mallet and just get used to that that grip, holding a mallet and playing the drum, and you get that nice fun thing that you're gripping and making a noise. But what you're doing is working on your your palmer grasp. Um, like an OT would, but that's that might be an example of something that we would want to do uh, with with our fun, fine motor skills. Um, and then if we, for example, this is this is of interest to y'all. So if we determine that our client needs to work on their attention goals or their attention skills, and that would fall under cognition. Um, and I work a lot with children on the spectrum, so I have a lot of attention goals. <laughs> um, um, we're just going to run through some of these others, and then we'll spend a little bit more time on the cognition goals. So this is uh, one of my clients, and she, as you can see, is working on a sensory motor goal here. Um, so we are meant to, and I've, I've already said this, but we're meant to be part of a, a patient's treatment team. 
So that means if, if my client has sensory motor girls like this young, this young girl does, then I need to speak with her occupational therapist or her physical therapist. Um, in this case, I've spoken with her physical therapist before I create these goals because that's not my scope. I mean, I'm not a physical therapist. I am a neurologic music therapist, which means that I'm trained to use music in, in a more rehab oriented role. Um, so I do have the additional training to do that, but I'm not a physical therapist. And so I would never presume to um, work on a goal that's that's really gross motor oriented without having somebody's um, overseeing approval, essentially. Um, we're just just like I would hope that if a physical therapist ever had something that where they really wanted to incorporate rhythm because they knew that's what their client needed in order to be successful that they would come to me so it's all it, it all works together but that's that's kind of an important point so um, music therapists always want we, we just want to make it really clear that we we have a very specific scope of practice and we are very careful not to expand it go beyond it <laughs> so we work within a treatment team um, so one of the reasons that this additional music component, uh, when you add it to something like a gross motor goal, is so powerful is that it helps cue that physical motion. So just the way that that quote explains, the strong rhythmic beat provided by the music helps the brain cue the body to create functional movement. So what you can't see, what's happening in this picture is that there's um, there's a metronome playing and there's music playing with a very, very strong beat and the child is kicking that drum. So that's actually a big gathering drum and she's kicking that drum rhythmically and she's working on her endurance of lifting up that leg and, and using using her foot to kick and, and the muscles there in her in her thigh. Um, and that that drum makes a really big, nice booming boom, boom, boom sound when she when she kicks it. So it's really it's satisfying. Um, and so that's what she's working on, but she gets to kick the drum to do it <laughs> instead of just, you know, kicking out with a physical therapist. So that's, that's an example of, of something that we might do more with children than, than, um, the gate and something like that, that we would do with older adults. So when we work with uh, speech and language, and this is one of my favorite, I should say this, this picture is one of my favorite uh, speech therapists. And there's actually on uh, the Harrison Center Facebook page, just within the last few days, uh, I interviewed her about our collaboration. So if you um, want to see that interview, uh, I think you can see a brief snippet of it on Facebook, but then there's a link to the, the extended YouTube, uh, the whole interview that I did with her. Um, so she and I collaborate together really, really well. Uh, she's bilingual. So it's even better because it means that I can work with her Spanish speaking children really, really well, even though my Spanish is rather poor. So we're actually doing music and speech therapy and collaborative sessions that are also bilingual. Um, and it's, it's really, it's, it's a fascinating, it's a wonderful partnership. So some common goals that a music therapist might highlight when we're doing speech and language um, is that and this would be across the lifespan might include like consonant sound production and children through preferred songs, um, which which have the opportunity to produce those songs, those sounds like that original uh, bringing home my baby bumblebee. So something like that. Uh, it might, it, we work on improving reciprocal conversation skills uh, in adolescence through turn taking and through instrument play. Uh, we increase the production of functional phrases like I need water or I love you in adults post stroke um, through the rhythmic singing of words. And there's a bunch of different techniques that we can use for that. And that's what was what they were doing with Gabby Giffords when they were helping her was using a bunch of the different neurologic music therapy techniques um, in order to help cue that speech. Um, and then, as we've mentioned, music therapists don't work in isolation, but rather as part of our, the larger treatment team. Um, so I recently worked alongside a speech therapist to help a teenager with autism on his, oh, sorry, this is, <laughs> I'm reading my, my colleagues. Uh, my colleague got to work with a speech therapist um, with a teenager with autism, and she was helping him work on his sentence inflection. Uh, so the, the speech therapist used her expertise to write out the phrases and help him organize his words. And then my colleague used her, our expertise to pair a melody with those phrases to help him learn how to make his voice go up and down for, for questions and for statements. So to work on the prosody of his speech. So these are all the different things that we might, we might do. Uh, these are just some goals that we might address. Sorry, I shouldn't say all. These are some of the goals that we might address uh, in a speech and language goal. 
And then this, so this is the video that I was referencing earlier. Um, this little boy is, uh, uh, is on the autism spectrum. And what I'm working with him here is um, understanding how to answer WH questions. So who, what, when, where, why. Um, he also has some attention needs. And so you'll hear that he's cued to answer the, um, the questions when he hears my, the pause in my, in my singing. And the, my, my questions help him stay focused on that picture. So, um, and the singing helps him stay focused on that picture because he still can't, if I just ask him what's in that picture, he's not gonna tell me very much, even if I were to, cause I just saw him tonight. So even if I were to ask him what, who's in that picture, he's gonna maybe say a boy but he's not gonna tell me anything else. So this, this you'll see, he's, he's cued to answer, answer these different questions. Um, so, all right. I have a picture, will you look at it with me? I have a picture, will you look at it with me? I have a picture, will you look at it with me? And tell me what you see. Who's in the picture? That's right. What are they doing? They're all fishing. That's right. Where are they fishing? The fish in the water. <laughs> when are they fishing? In the lake. When, when, what time? When are they fishing? My pet. When is it in the morning or the night? The morning. In the morning. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they're fishing? Because she eat the water. Why do you think they're fishing? They want to catch a fish. They want to catch some fish. Very nice. So you can see how much the music is helping him stay at attentive to what I'm asking as well. So, um, and you could also hear how I'm, I'm using pauses. Uh, so he knows when it's his turn to respond. Um, so all of that, the, those are, he, that was for a speech and language goal, but you can also see how, um, how attention <laughs> is being manipulated by the music as well. So I thought I wanted to, to share that one with you guys. Um, plus he's just super cute. <laughs> Um, so uh, executive functioning, this is, these are the, the different sort of facets of executive functioning that we can really uh, highlight in our music therapy sessions. And um, since I work with a lot of children that are diagnosed as uh, being on the autism spectrum, um, these are goals that I work with a lot of my children on. Um, so organization, problem solving, decision making, reasoning, comprehension, and the, actually the, the composition of music does almost all of those things. So, and it doesn't have to be complex. Like I'm not sitting there asking that child, for example, to sit down on the piano and, oh, we're gonna make up a whole melody and we're gonna make up a whole song and we're gonna write lyrics. I mean, I can still address all of those goals with him if we sit down at, um, at the table with some desk bells, which kind of look like handbells without, uh, without the, the the handle, you just, you tap them with your finger and they're, they have kind of a nice sound, but they're color coded. So we can sit down at the table and he can make up melodies with different colors of bells. So he can do like red, orange, green, purple. And that's what he's doing. He's not thinking about the fact that he's created a little melody right there, but the, each color is a different, uh, is a different note. So he has in fact created a melody. Uh, he's organized the order that he wants that those colors to be in, which is in fact, you know, that's using that organization. He's problem solving because he's creating, he's figuring out what order he wants everything to be in. He's doing a lot of decision making. So this is uh, when when you see that addressed with instrument play, it can be really simple, but we're still able to uh, um, affect all of those different uh, aspects of executive functioning and and just help that frontal lobe, <laughs> that prefrontal lobe, really access all of that different uh, all that different information. So when we have somebody that, that um, has a higher executive functioning, then I love to do songwriting an actual, you know, what, what would be more recognizable as composition. So for example, um, I had a veteran that I was seeing uh, for PTSD and he actually did have a music background. Um, 
and we were working on more specifically we're working on on relaxation and coping strategies but uh because of his strong music background excuse me <clears throat> uh he we could do a lot of composition which was really helping his executive functioning his decision making and he composed this beautiful piece about a walk in the woods because that was somewhere that he found that was uh, that was the place that he he felt most comfortable and so he he recalled that place in his mind and then he created this um this melody and this accompaniment uh, to place himself there mentally. Um, and that, that was, that was our intervention. I mean, that was all intentional, but, um, there's so much executive functioning that happened while he was creating that whole piece of music. So, um, music therapists kind of, it's not, we don't have it easy when it comes to executive functioning, but the creation of music really, um, it corpuses, so, encompasses so much executive functioning. Um, and then attention. So specifically, the reason that attention works, <laughs> I'm sorry, the reason that music works so well with attention and I'm, I'm uh, are, are for these reasons. Um, so um, music brings the timing, the grouping and the organization so that the attention, so we can sustain attention with our, with our children, uh, which, which is the most common way we do it. Um, Music recruits that shared uh, the shared and the parallel brain systems to assist the frontal lobe in maintaining that alternating dis attention sk uh, skill. And music provides the extra dimension of emotion and motivation to help our clients stay on task. So um, all of those things are just they they make it so much easier for us to address attention skills in music therapy because music naturally um, tends to grab your attention and in in many cases successfully hold it for longer periods of time um, and and it just it feels more successful and we're able to accomplish some things more quickly just because we have our clients attention for longer spans of time um, than than they might be able to accomplish uh, some uh, in some of their other therapies so when you the reason that we work on a treatment team is because we talk to our other, we talk to our occupational therapists, our physical therapists, and our, our, our speech therapists, and we say, okay, what are the goals that you guys are addressing? We add this musical component, and the natural, one of the natural benefits of adding the musical component is that we add this extended attention um, and this extended interest in what it is that we're doing so we can accomplish the goals. Um, so that's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty fascinating. And, and pretty unique to music therapy. <clears throat> and then we, I have a, a video that I'm gonna share with you guys next. This is not my client. This is actually um, a music therapist that used to work for the Harrison Center, but this is a specific. So I've mentioned the neurologic music therapy, and this is a specific neurologic music therapy technique that this, uh, this music therapist is using uh, to um, address sustained attention. Um, and the, it's it's all explained within the video. There's there's words that, that come up and it'll explain what's happening. But um, the client is uh, both um, hearing impaired as well as visual, vision impaired and has been diagnosed with ADD. And um, she is working on her sustained attention. And the music therapist is having the client work on this by listening for musical cues. So the music therapist is playing in either one, one, the high end of the piano or the low end of the piano. And the client has to play a different instrument depending on where the, th the therapist is playing the piano. So you'll see it, that'll also be more, more clear, but you can, you can see how much attention is, uh, is being sustained and what's necessary for this client to, to use in order to um, be successful. So. We'll just watch the video.
We we can't hear you, Ingrid. Yeah, I lost her sound. Yeah. Uh oh. Nope. We're trying to read lips. I don't even know what to do to tell her to do. Do y'all see the last line that says music and professional audio? Show any meeting option to turn on original sound. Could that be it? Oh, that could be it. I don't know. That down there at the bottom, music and professional audio. I don't know if you checked that, if it'd do any good or not. Uh, now my battery's running low. It has to do with probably something with the video because it started when the video, she brought in the third instrument yep. or fourth instrument. Yeah. Yep, because that started um, running off then. Mm -hmm. Her daughter Josephina said suggested leaving and rejoining, which we yeah. can wait. Don't feel bad, Ingrid. Just do that. Yeah, we, we have stuff like this happen all the time. Back. Yeah, yeah. We'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait. Just try it. We're I think it'll work anywhere. <laughs> We're gonna let you back in. We promise. We're loving this. <laughs> nope. Nope. Real good until she showed a video, and now the sound is gone. Nancy, how are you? You're, yeah. We miss seeing you. I'm seeing y'all. A lot of weird things. Um, COVID. And yeah. My son got COVID. Oh. And then I got Bell's palsy, which I told Pam about. You got it? Bell's palsy. Yeah. yeah. I had another friend that did, and it's okay now. You're a, you look fine now. Okay, you're beautiful, Thanks. absolutely beautiful. That's sweet. Thanks. Um, cognitively, that's more important for me though. Cut off. I, I think I'm one of those long haulers. I'm just yeah. not as crisp as I used to be, which wasn't that crisp in the first place. But um, I'm getting there. Yay. Because that gives the Bell's palsy, then, uh, then I got double vision. A lot of weird wow. neurological stuff. Wow. So. Um, and you had COVID as well, too? No. I, it start, I think it kind of manifested everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Back in late January. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just been. And a, how's your son doing? Indestructible. I mean, <laughs> he, he got it, you know, and all he did was take a couple of naps longer than normal yeah. and he seems to be um cognitively fine with Good. school and everything yeah ingrid but so yeah back. that's i'm so glad yeah. to catch up with you nancy we've missed oh pam i miss you too pam and i have talked about how we miss everybody uh yeah. same here mm -hmm. okay and can you, can you hear you. us ingrid I can hear you guys. Can Yay, we can hear oh, you. Yeah. You're back. <laughs> Thank you, Josephina. Thank you, your daughter. <laughs> awesome. I, I will. She's just 15. She's in my IT department, so I'll make That's sure I let her know. That's Thank you. I wish I had her in my IT department. <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know if I can share my screen. Oh, we have kids. That's all right. <laughs> just finish up and don't worry about it. Okay. So. Here, this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> um, so we're gonna do something real simple to begin with. Um, both of these are simple. 
unfortunately, Zoom, um, oh, and now my dog has just decided to go nuts. So Zoom, there's a, there's a delay in the audio. So I'm going to need you guys to all unmute yourselves, first of all. Um, but we'll, we're going to do something real simple. So this is one of the things that I, I have my, my kids try and do when I'm working on um, uh, attention. And I would like for you guys to clap on a specific word uh, of this song. So the word that you're listening for is rock. Um, rock. I lied. I'm sorry. The word you're for is clock. <laughs> clock. <laughs> okay. We're going to sing rock around the clock. And every time you hear the word clock, you clap. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I can't hear you. I mean, you can, you can unmute yourselves if you want, if you want me to be able to, saying you. Right now. <laughs> to hear you, uh, but if you don't want to do that, that's okay too, but you can, you can just follow along. <laughs> so. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, we'll rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. example <laughs> so there's a lot of listening involved with that and then you're uh -huh. you know you're laughing um and i know that that's a 50s song but my kids love 50s music because it's very predictable it's very rhythmic and uh -huh. the, the, the words repeat themselves a lot so, <laughs> so I use even with my children also i have an old soul when it comes to music admittedly so um they, they get a little bit of it. The other one that I wanted to share with you guys um, tonight. Uh, so this is one that I had to adapt, uh, so especially for teletherapy. So I was telling Pam uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, we had to switch to teletherapy. And so I suddenly had to figure out how to lead music therapy sessions with children and their parents in their homes with potentially no instruments. So when they can come to the clinic, I have all kinds of things that we can use, all kinds of instruments, but I had to come up with ways that they can work on their goals, maybe with no instruments in their homes. So um, if I'm lucky, they might have a piano or they can make a music shaker out of like a, an old water bottle and put some beads or some beans or something like that in there and shake. So this would be something that we would do um, with that. So I'm gonna play a ukulele and you're gonna clap again because I don't know what instrument y'all have, <laughs> um, but you're gonna you're gonna clap as long as you hear me playing. When you stop, when you hear me stop playing, you stop clapping. So and then I could tell this really easily with my kids because then I had to they had to look at me because sometimes they can't see my instrument either. So that gives it an extra component. Of, mm. um, so I'll do that with y'all. So you're just gonna have to listen. And when I stop playing, you stop clapping. The other. Um, variation on this uh if i have a child that really just needs that extra visual stimulation i'll have them draw so they draw while i'm playing and when i stop playing they stop drawing um so we just had to get really really creative <laughs> with our teletherapy during the pandemic but it, it's still entirely possible to do music therapy over over teletherapy so um here we go so you're clapping until i stop And I can't hear you guys clapping, so I just have to trust that you're doing it. <laughs> so I'll try it one more time. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so um, I'm sorry that, you know, attention, attention ones are kind of harder to do remotely. Um, we can do a lot in the in our sessions in the course of a in the course of a session uh, in person, but over Zoom uh, we're a little bit more limited. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate your your presence tonight. And if you have questions, I'm I'm happy to answer them. I think we lost Nancy. I know her battery was about to die. So. Well, I have a quick question, and I I, I don't want to take over training if she if you have questions. But um, how long does the session usually last?
Oh, good question. That's a good question. So we have um, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and um, 60 minute sessions. And that sort of depends on the person's needs and such. Exactly. And then unfortunately, music therapy, I mean, this is just a fact of, of, of life, but music therapy is not covered by as many insurance companies, if any. So sometimes it's it's a matter of finances. Uh, we are, as as um, my, my cl uh, clinic in particular, uh, is very, very involved in advocacy on the state level. And we are right now advocating for licensure for music therapy uh, in the in the Texas legislature. Um, so we have some bills in this during this session. Awesome. Um, but that's, that's not, that's not with us yet. So, um, yeah, well, I, just, I can see this academically. Be, it, it, I, mean, I mean, you already know this. Um, but, you know, dyslexia. Yes, dyslexia, the Broca's area. Mm -hmm. um, the academic piece is huge. Um, autism with comprehension. Yes. <laughs> when, you, when you shared that piece, I was like, Oh, man, I'm yeah. thinking instantly, how can we create a reading program that incorporates music? Can be done. It can. <laughs> it takes someone young like you, but not someone old like me. <laughs> not that young. <laughs> mm, this okay. is amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, Trying, did you, do you have a question? I see your hand raised. Um, but you'll need to unmute yourself. I don't, I don't know what was written in chat. I don't see a question in chat. Okay. Here we go. Can music therapy aspects be incorporated in a music school? Sure. Um, in a music school, do they mean like uh, like a, like the high school for the performing and visual arts, or what what kind of music school? Like uh, Vivaldi or something like that that teaches music lessons, or we don't know. Um, so I guess the the short answer to that oh, is yes, okay. music lessons. Okay. Um, so music teachers. Um, and music therapists are, again, those are two different disciplines. Um, our clinic doesn't provide um, adaptive lessons uh, because it's kind of a gray area. So there are some um, music therapists that provide adaptive lessons for someone who may be like a child on the um, autism spectrum that maybe has a hard time with more traditional piano lessons. Um, we, don't, we don't do that because it just, it blurs the lines too much. Um, and music educators are not music therapists and music therapists are not music educators. So uh, you might, I think it would be a natural fit to place a music therapist within a, a music education facility like that, like Vivaldi or something like that. I think that would be a really natural fit um, to send children that are already interested in music that maybe need a little bit of extra, need, need functional goals, functional work as well. Um, but I wouldn't, I would caution against blending a music lesson with a music therapy session because they're different things. So I don't know if that answers that question or not, but that would be my, just because they're, they're, dis, they're different disciplines and we're working on different things. And yes, thank you. So you got. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, and I don't, Pam and I have been doing this support group for a long time and I mm -hmm. apologize I was late, but I've had <laughs> several issues with my computer starting yesterday so i'm not sure what's going on but anyway i had to reboot everything to get on time get get on and it wasn't until 7 14. Yeah. anyway um music therapy i often refer uh in the school setting okay. and typically you have even a large district one or two music therapists for the whole mm -hmm. school district and, and they talk about the educational and the clinical model um, yeah. Nowhere in the law, I just want you to know, in IDEA, Individual Disability Education Act, does it say there's a clinical and educational model? But we do know in a clinical setting, we can go more in depth. Yes. However, still tagging on as a related service yeah. to areas of academic deficit or behavioral mm -hmm. or attention yes. is so supportive. So I, I just want to make sure because I'm going to refer you guys. I've already posted you on my on my um, thank you <laughs> on my lighthouse thing. Okay. That uh, you you can do IEEs yes. right, independent educational evaluation, yes. mm -hmm. and you will do it specifically for a school setting. Yes. Do you know how to do that? Okay. Um, yeah, I can show you our. Here's our assessment tool right here. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Now, if this oh, now this. I, I should say though, real quick, if if the the school district that you work in does have music therapists, 
they of course are going to be the ones that need to do that first. Uh, if you need an additional um, outside reviewer, then that would be obviously right. when you. That's call. what the IEE is. Yeah, is that yeah, independent yes, sorry. Yes. educational? Because okay, I don't work in that is, is setting that as much. Yeah. Well, the school district has to do their evaluation first. Again, I apologize. I don't know why she always rings the doorbell. Sorry about that. That's all right. No, the school district has to do their evaluation first. And if, if they don't qualify, that's usually when we'll look for an independent. I.e., yes. My dogs. I'll advertise you through a network. All right, now mine's going on. It's just the cores of the dogs. I will. I will advertise you through a local uh, Texas. Are you guys throughout Texas, or can you only do the Greater Houston area? In person, we only do Houston. Um, we and I don't think that you'd want to do it. I don't. I don't even know how an IEE would work with virtually. So we are just in the Houston area. Harrison Center is just in the music area or the Houston area. But right. my director is very well connected within the state, um, and she can recommend. Okay. And then um, I'm really surprised that the insurance doesn't cover it when schools do cover it. it oh, just yeah. Think, it's really just think about that. Yeah, I know. Okay. It's really interesting. Um, if, if it's covered, it's uh, it's after the deductible. You know, it's, it's out of network and it's after deductible has been met. Um, so unfortunately, like, um, you know, Medicaid doesn't cover it. There was one there was one um, specific Medicaid program that did. Um, and um, and it no, doesn't anymore. So that's a shame. That yeah. really is a shame because it's critically that, that's, important. That's one of the reasons we're really, really pushing for licensure because then at least okay. I, I am going to advertise you in the local uh, uh, with other educational consultants and advocates. So thank you <laughs> for IEEs. Yeah, we we always are looking for good music therapists for independent evaluation. All right, All right. I'm done talking. It's been oh, great. Uh, Ingrid. Oh, there's Nancy's back. We'll let her back in. I was saying, mm -hmm. Robin, that I think it would be great for us to have a an event and uh, maybe do all of the ones we had art therapy, music therapy, I guess occupational therapy. So, um, you know, if you could think of some others too, Ingrid, that would go along mm -hmm. with that, I think it would be really helpful because. People are always looking for, you know, we had one last month on uh, homeopathic uh, remedies and it too was very, very interesting. So I think, did you, did you hear me, Robin, when I was saying about an event? I thought it would be good if we did one on have like music therapy, art therapy, occupational therapy, and just, you know, really explain um, what the differences are. Because I know when we had the occupational therapist, I think a lot of people, I even asked her to clarify the difference between occupational and physical. So yeah, there's difference. a lot of yeah. people don't understand, you know, that they do different things or often overlap. Like you said, you can work with an art therapist and vice versa, which I never even thought about. Well, many of those therapists you just spoke of, of are tapping into neurology. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's completely different than, uh, I'm going to teach you a song to sing. Right. It's not that at all. Yeah, no, it's not. And that's that's that additional music, or sorry, neurologic music ther uh, therapy training that I have. Uh, is And that's why I can share all the, bra the brain slides with you, because that's specifically all of our interventions that we provide through the Harrison Center, because we're all neurologic music therapists. Um, How do you say that? Neurological or neuro neurologic? Neurologic music therapy. Neurologic music yeah. therapy. And um, and I'm actually a fellow within that that or that um, training at this point. But um, yeah, that's that's that that higher level of rehab training really that that uh, it is allows us to understand what exactly we're affecting when we're affecting change with the music itself. Uh, what areas of the brain we're accessing? Uh, what specific treatment goals we need to be um, accessing? Because that's it helps um, the neurologic music therapy is more effective in, in um, manipulating that neuroplasticity. Um, so we're, we're using really, really targeted goals. There's um, there's so much I want to share with you, Ingrid, and we can, I'll do, I will reach out to you. But the, okay. one of the things is um, like behaviorally, these kids that are coming in um, with uh, home trauma, 
Mm, sure. Or dysfunction or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, if you're, if you're you know, like, it's one thing to say, okay, I'm going to start a band. And it's another thing to say, I'm going to start a two friendship music therapy band where right. they think they're playing in a band, but what they're developing is so much more neurologically. Yeah. I can just see this expanding. There's a new school opening called the Anchor School. Okay. And I, I want to mm -hmm. put you in touch so with them as that. well. There's so much going on. Um, That's great. Well, we are, um, I was going to say, my director is uh, connected with CPS. Uh, we are hoping to start um, working yes. that. It's, it's, it's finding the funding for that. Uh, there's there's some grants available, but finding grants that it will fund the, the music therapy. Um, I think there's a there's a, the, a there's a specific center that she's connected with that's, that is interested in doing more with some that. ideas on that. I'll, I'll eat. Pam, what about Center for School Behavioral Health, where they're coming in, you know, and the reason I'm going into Dickinson ISD is the Center for School Behavioral Health. And they come in with music therapy, but they started to, which I also kids. wanted to mention just for you guys reference and I should um, again check our website or our Facebook page but um, we are offering music therapy groups this summer for children um, ages oh, okay. five to ten there's there's four of them being offered right now uh, just it's four Fridays over the course of the summer um, and uh, yeah kids ages five to ten that in, in for small group I mean I'm gonna be the one leading it um, but it's so it's like you know four to five kids max um, and they need to be able to participate independently on their own. Um, the other one that I want to make you guys aware of, because I'm hoping to turn this into a monthly, um, a monthly deal, uh, we're going to pilot it hopefully in June, is for actually for parents and caregivers. So, so many of our parents oh. need music therapy too. <laughs> they, especially now that they, they've seen us do uh, it over teletherapy. So we're trying to offer this group for parents and caregivers um, to come in and enjoy, you know, playing the drums and doing music therapy on their own for them, targeted for them and their specific needs, uh, you know, doing music and relaxation or uh, playing drums and things like that. So again, I'm hoping that turns into a monthly occurrence, but right now it's just, um, and these, these are for fee. I mean, I, 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 you know, I need to make that clear. This, you know, these are not free offerings, but uh, both of those are coming up this summer. And can, can you send so, me, can I get on your list so we can get this information? Yeah. <laughs> well, happily send us to you. <laughs> yeah, because this summer I've had a lot of problems. People have called and uh, a lot of places that usually have programs are either not having them or mm -hmm. they're only open to currently enrolled students. So it's been yeah. hard for people to find some stuff. Yeah. So we're, you know, we're, we have to be small, you know, because it's, right. it's, it's a it's a large room that I work and it's only in one of our locations. So it is the, the Bel Air location. So if it's, if that's inconvenient for families and unfortunately yeah, we can't, yeah, we can't do anything no. about that, but, um, and it's, it's just for an hour and it's just four Fridays, but it's something, you know, we're trying, we want to, we want to offer this and we'll be working on each, each different uh, week is a different theme. So it's travel and water and insects and animals, I believe. Um, cool. And we'll make some sort of a craft and we'll, we'll do, you know, it's not as targeted as it would be in a session because it's a group, but, um, right, right. well, we'll it'll be, it will be goal oriented. That's wonderful. I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get on your site and then share what you're doing. Oh, okay. Thank you. I was going to say, and your website is, was on the flyer. So everybody should have gotten that in their email. So if they want to I mean, reach I'm out, gonna it. like, that's, it's a really great website. I, I don't have anything to do with the creation of it, but it's a really great website. <laughs> Everybody should check it out and pass it on. So um, unless anybody's got a burning question, um, I guess we should conclude. And uh, I'm glad everybody came. And uh, like I'd said earlier, you're, you, you did get a lot of hits on the Facebook thing. So I do think people are are wondering and learning so we'll definitely stay in touch so all right that sounds good appreciate it, it has been wonderful <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you so much thank ingrid you. good night everybody bye everybody bye, bye nancy time. bye pamela bye. bye take care